In this lesson, we're going over five topics. First off, we're going to talk about cello anatomy, the parts of the cello and the bow. We're going to talk about body position, how we should be sitting with the cello. We're going to talk about what to do with our right hand to hold the bow. We're going to talk about left hand position, how we use these little thingies to play notes. And then we're going to put it all together and learn a scale. So you're going to be playing cello by the end of this lesson. All right, let's dive right in. This is a cello. Hmm. Um, the body of the cello is made of spruce or maple generally. This is called a fingerboard where, you guessed it, our fingers go. Um, this is normally made of a harder wood called ebony. These are our strings. We have an A string, a D string, a G, and a C string. The pegs up here, the tuning pegs, correspond with those. We have A, D, G, and there's a missing peg here because I elected to have that, but this is the C peg. We have a bridge that holds the strings up on one end and a nut on the other. Down here we have something called fine tuners. Um, the pegs up there are for the big changes. And then to make the little changes, we get to use these. Sometimes really fancy cellos won't have these. A lot of violinists don't even use them because their instrument is so small. But for the most part, we have them because it's not fun to deal with those pegs up there. On my instrument, I have this. You'll see this little wire. This is actually a pickup. Don't worry about that. This is called the tailpiece. Down here we have the end pin, which is a lovely invention so that we don't have to hold our instrument up with our legs. These round parts of the instrument are called the bouts, and this is the waist. Um, and this part here is called the ribs of the cello. These holes, funny name, they're called F holes. <laughs> oh, my child. Um, okay, underneath our bridge, there's some stuff happening on the inside that's important to know about. We have a bass bar that's running up and down here, really helping us get that low, powerful sound. And the MVP of the cello and all string instruments, I would say, is a stick that's under the left side of your bridge. It's called the sound post. It's holding up the top of your instrument. It's bearing many thousands of pounds of pressure. Um, and yeah, if you ever hear that rolling around on the inside, um, if you knock your instrument over, or um, if you take all the strings off at once, which I never recommend doing, um, your sound post might fall over, and in which case you should take all of the pressure off of your instrument immediately and bring it to a luthier who can set it back up, because without that sound post, your instrument can just kind of cave in like a black hole upon itself which no one wants. Over on our bow, here it is. We have, you know, the stick. This is called the tip of the bow. This is called the frog. I don't know why. Most bows will have some sort of winding on them. Um, cheaper bows, it'll be plastic. Um, and as they get more expensive, you'll get different kinds of metals. So that's just basically protecting the wood from all the oil on our hands. Um, sometimes you'll see cellists with surgical tubing. It's just like a nice comfy little grip. Um, this is a screw that comes out and so that the frog detaches from the stick of the bow when you get a rehair. As I'm editing this video, I realized I forgot to tell you the other purpose of the screw, which is to tighten and loosen your bow. So you have to tighten it about three turns uh, when you're going to play the cello so that it's tighter. You don't want to get it so tight that it starts bending the stick, you always want to have a nice curve in the stick. It should always have a smile. And then you loosen the bow back three turns when you're done playing and you put it to bed. The hairs on the bow are actually horse hairs. So when you first get a rehair, if your luthier doesn't rosin the bow for you, you actually won't be able to make any noise come out of it. But what rosin does is... 
what rosin does is it takes the little microscopic hooks that are on these horse hairs and it sticks them up and makes them real sticky so that when you draw the bow across the string the little hooks are catching onto the string and making that lovely sound. Those are the big parts of the cello and the bow. Let's move on now to body position. So when you sit down to play the cello, you're gonna wanna stand up. Hello. <laughs> and um, have your feet shoulder width apart. You're gonna take a seat and make sure your feet are flat on the ground. We don't want them doing any weird stuff. We want them flat on the ground. You're sitting up nice and straight and we're going to take our cello and put it between our legs. So I have the cello situated between my knees. Um, the bottom bout of the instrument is situated right between my knees and I'm not holding the instrument at all with my knees. It's just there's a little so that this doesn't happen. And then the top of my instrument is resting on my chest. I've sometimes been asked if left-handed people can play the cello like this, which whew, feels terrible for me. But um, in at least in classical music school, we don't switch sides like you can in guitar. Um, we always have the left hand playing the notes and the right hand playing the bow. Um, but I have met um, a few left-handed fiddle players since graduating school who have figured out how to switch them. But for the purposes of this lesson, we're going to stick with this. Some things to look out for if you're trying to figure out if you're sitting correctly. If your legs are getting tired, that means you're holding your instrument. So you need to just relax and let the instrument rest against you. If you're eventually starting to play your, with your bow and your bow is hitting your legs, that means that you need to adjust your cello so that it is more in front of you instead of up real close. We don't want to feel like we're climbing the cello ever. No. Another handy piece of equipment that might help you out is a handy rock stop. This is a super special one that I got from Santal Studios. Um, you should check them out if you want a pretty one, but you can get them cheap, um, like a metal or a plastic one you can get pretty cheap on Amazon or wherever you get your music supplies. What this will do is prevent your instrument from slipping around, moving around, it just secures it in one spot. All right, let's move on to bow hold. So when I was young, they actually called it bow grip, but as I got older, um, teachers, the teachers I had wanted to get away from asking us to grip things because gripping means Usually that things aren't fluid. Gripping kind of insinuates that you have to hold on to something for dear life. When in reality, we actually want to hold on to the bow as loosely as possible so that we can make those bow changes as seamless and beautiful as we can. I want to put a brief disclaimer on this section of the lesson. Um, the bow hold is probably one of the most difficult parts of playing a string instrument. It's just so particular and takes years and years and years and years and years and years to perfect, if you want to call it that. I'm still working on it. It's been over 20 years. So you do not feel bad if at the end of this lesson you don't feel like you understand because it's a daily struggle. So let's take our left hand and hold the stick of the bow, making sure to not touch these hairs. Um, the more hand oil you get on them, the quicker they'll kind of get ruined and you'll need to get a rehair. So let's just stay away from them. So we're gonna shake this hand out. When you, when you just put your hand out like this and you look at your fingers and your hand, like for, for most of us, I think, your hand actually makes this nice kind of C shape. Your fingers will space out pretty naturally. And this is how we wanna hold the bow. So we're gonna take one second, I'm gonna get closer. Hey, so we're gonna take our thumb and that is gonna go on the side closest to us, obviously. And we're gonna put the bow, we're gonna put our thumb kind of in this groove that happens right between the frog and the leather strap that might be on your bow. It's hard to see on my bow because I have this uh, surgical tubing, but um, 
you, you could still probably see it on your bow where the black part of the frog ends and the black leather binding begins. You're going to kind of stick your thumb just kind of right there and we want to get right on the top of it with a nice bend in our thumb. Here we go. There we go. Nice bend in our thumb right on the side of the bow. Then we're going to take the rest of the fingers and place them as such. So um, our index finger is going to go on the leather wrapping. Our second finger, which is our middle finger, is going to go on this silvery guy on the frog. Then the next two fingers are just going to fit somewhere on the frog, not up on the stick. We want them all, we want all our fingertippies, except for this one, to be on the frog. And it's not just fingertips, my kind of middle joints on my, my hand are all touching the stick of the bow. So it looks like this is the ideal solution. We should be able to do these nice little finger push-ups. You can hold your bow and see if you can do it. A really common mistake I see are people feeling like they need to control the bow and hold it or it's gonna fall and they end up creating this like this little locked position where they're pinky on top and that's not what we want. You'll see violinists playing with their pinky on top. They just play a different instrument. Um, but their pinky's always bent anyway. It's never stuck. So we want to have this nice, relaxed bow hold. We should be able to bend all our fingers. Again, this will take a long time to learn, but it's a good start. Great, so now that you have a sense of the bow hold, let's go and bow some open strings. We don't need this hand yet. Again, let's grab the bow with our left hand. We'll shake it out, set it up. Little push up. Mm -mm -mm. And let's just put our bow down on, let's say the G string because it's comfortable. It's not an extreme string, it's kind of in the middle. So let's take the G and what I want you to do is see if you can put your bow down and grab the string with your hair. I am moving it ever so slightly back and forth. I'm not letting it go. I'm just biting and gripping. This is the kind of feeling we want to have before we start every note on the cello. We don't want to be unless it says to in the music for the most part. Let me come in closer. And let's just play some open G. experiencing are these kinds of sounds space sounds if you're getting space sounds it's because your bow is not going across the string straight so I highly recommend practicing bowing in front of a mirror because you can't really tell what is straight from looking down but you can from looking in front like I'm looking at my little screen monitor and I'm like yeah that's between our bridge and our fingerboard for now. We just want to kind of stay right in the middle. We want to make sure we're playing either on the, the side of the hair that's closest to us or with all our hair, with a flat bow hair. We don't ever want to be playing with our stick facing the ground. It always has to be flat or facing us. So let's play C, G, D, and A. to play around with just some open strings and seeing if you can keep this nice loose hand. Now let's talk about left hand. First things first, we need to talk about the numbers that we give the fingers. 
if you've played piano before. Unfortunately, this is totally different from what you already know. I learned piano first and had to make the transition to switching things around in my brain when I started playing cello. So one is actually going to be your index finger, two is your middle, three is your ring finger, and four is your pinky. Your thumb is just your thumb. And once you get really good at the cello, eventually you're gonna start using your thumb as a finger, um, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. We're just gonna use one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so shake it out. Just like in our right hand, we wanted that nice relaxed C shape, we want that in our left hand as well. So shake it like Tay Tay says, and you're gonna find this nice, comfortable C shape with these nice spaces in between your finger. We're gonna take that C shape and we're going to just turn it and put it on the cello. Most important thing we wanna think about right now is to put take our thumb and make sure it is behind our second finger. Next thing we wanna think about is our arm position. Just like our right hand, we don't wanna grip anything and strangle it. We don't wanna do that either with the left hand. So we want to think of a nice straight arm kind of going down at this hmm, 45 degree angle. I don't know what that's in relation to. I guess this is if this is zero, this is 45, negative 45. Zero, 45, bad, good. We want to have this nice angle with a straight arm and we want to feel like gravity is helping us pull the hand down. You want to feel as though you have a weight on your hand and it is helping you play the notes. We don't want to grip it, you know, like I feel like guitar and those instruments that where you see the, the thumb kind of sneaking around. Uh, it's a lot of gripping, but because of our instrument being the way it is, we have the luxury of using gravity to help us instead of squeezing things. So maybe without our bow, let's just pizzicato some notes. That's a new word. Pizzicato means plucking in classical music. Don't worry about if the notes are real notes or anything, let's just play around. Doesn't have to sound good. Let's put it all together and see if we can play a scale. So a lot of beginners, when they get their beginner cello, they have tapes on their instrument that look kind of like frets so that they know where to put their fingers. Um, I don't have that on my instrument. You kind of, you let those go after a few years. We really wanna to get to a point where we don't need those tapes and we can really use our ear to know where the notes are. But it's totally okay at first to use some tapes. So you might have some on your instrument. If you don't, that's also okay. It just will require a little more listening on your part. So we're gonna talk about the D major scale. In first position, we're just going to do one octave the key of D major is F sharp and C sharp, and it's gonna be great, it's really easy. So we're gonna start on open D and we're gonna play the fingering open, one, three, four, open A, one, three, four. And first position, the hand position is pretty similar to a, just a natural hand position. So you don't have to do anything crazy. Let's play it together and see if you can find the notes with me. If you don't have tapes on your instrument, see if you can find the notes with me. Let's go nice and slow. So D, one, E, F sharp three,
right? You just played your first scale on the cello. How about that? So let's just recap what I think are the most important things to remember when you're a beginner cellist. No gripping in this hand or this hand. If you're getting tired or if something's starting to hurt, you need to take a break and you need to shake it out and reset because it's not hard to get an injury by playing incorrectly on this instrument if you play too much the wrong way you could hurt yourself and we never want that the second thing is to listen it's so easy to just kind of and just i'm playing the fingerings they're correct so i am right no because this is an unfretted instrument we really need to use our ears so i would recommend Anytime you're practicing anything, for until the end of time, I still do this. For some portion of my practicing, I have a drone on so that I can hear the relationship between the notes and make I can make sure that I'm playing in tune. So for that D scale, I would put a nice D on and I would be able to hear, hopefully, if something sounds a little flat or a little sharp. And the last thing I want to recommend to you is to just Give yourself grace. You're likely an adult or close to being an adult who is learning the cello for the first time. And it's not hard to start a new thing that is so hard when you're an adult because we have a lot of ego and we don't want to sound bad at something. Just have fun with it. Just know if you keep practicing, it will get better. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.